Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today, we are chatting with Alan Jennings, Executive Director of Community Action Committee of the Lehigh Valley. Alan has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Alan, for joining us today. Happy to be here. You have a considerable operation that provides a whole range of services to people in need. Let's talk a little bit about the, the whole range of different services that you provide topically, and also then the, the, the uh, programs, the names of the programs, which, which have uh, real meaning in this community. Yeah, well, first, I think of ourselves as a, an advocacy organization, first and foremost. I think um, people need to, I mean, there are problems that require solving, and the solution usually comes from a partnership of people working together. And so we spend a lot of time identifying community problems, um, trying to get attention for those um, problems, and then bring together the folks that are capable of being part of the solution. We're also a community development organization, so we spend a lot of our energy trying to make the community a better place. I would say that the classic approach to poverty um, is a human services model. And in my judgment, human services um, means that you're the problem and all we got to do is fix you. And the reality is the marketplace is, is failing us. It doesn't create enough opportunities. It doesn't um, create opportunities that pay the, enough wages so people can pay their own bills. And so, you know, to su um, suggest that it's the fault of individuals when, you know, we've got half the families in our homeless shelter are headed by a person who's working. Um, that's not, they're not the failing here. That, that's in a marketplace that, that doesn't work adequately. So we're interested in trying to tweak the marketplace and, and in order to make it work better for people. And then finally, we do human service kinds of things. So, I mean, we do everything from, you know, develop affordable housing, rehab blighted properties, uh, neighborhood revitalization work, pocket parks, um, streetscaping. Um, we've installed street lights. We've done murals. We've done mosaics, um, playgrounds. Um, but we also um, help people start their own businesses. We do lending. Um, we do both entrepreneurial training and um, uh, finance their businesses if they can't get a loan from a bank. Um, we help people buy their first home. We try to save people from foreclosure. Um, and we've been pretty successful at all those things. And, and there's more. We run a regional food bank that serves six counties, uh, distributes 9 million pounds of food a year to some 200 nonprofits. And we run the largest homeless shelter for families in, uh, I think, in eastern Pennsylvania. There are two aspects to that whole description that I find to be particularly fascinating. First of all, the, the breadth of different problems that you're trying to solve and how you're trying to solve them. In that very short summary, you go from uh, providing direct services to providing training so that people can serve themselves. You, you hit education, you hit neighborhoods, you hit infrastructure, streetlights, you hit art, murals, you hit all sorts of different aspects of communal life, and you're trying to come in and intervene where that intervention is going to be particularly potent in addressing a whole series of associated problems. It's very unusual and it's very sophisticated. Well, I appreciate that. And it's also very philosophically yes. reasoned through. I mean, we, we um, you know, I mentioned about, you know, the, the notion that human services is a solution when it really isn't. The marketplace is a solution. But um, another uh, failed, I think, approach to anti-poverty work is to help people get out of the, the ghetto essentially. And so basically the problem is if we help the winners get out and we leave the proverbial losers behind, there's always going to be a ghetto. And so our model is to try to make the neighborhoods a better place so that people who are able to get out choose to stay, that they become owners, investors in their, their community in all of its many forms, participating in the political process, you know, in their block watch, um, making sure their property is maintained properly so that it doesn't devalue neighboring properties. You know, all the things that create a viable marketplace in, in, in the urban setting that is um, such a, a, an incubator for problems if not uh, properly attacked. Talk about the origin uh, and the founding of the Community Action Committee of the Lehigh Valley. 1965, um, actually August of 1964, the Economic Opportunity Act was passed. Judy Collins was, uh, you know, there's a live record of her uh, 1964 saying, um, you know, today they passed a law to, to 
start the war on poverty, we're going to eliminate poverty in America, it was incredibly naive. You know, we're 50 years later and we still haven't eliminated poverty. In fact, I would argue that if my if measurement of, of poverty is the uh, measurement of my success, then I've been a complete failure um, because poverty has not gotten, um, has certainly not been eradicated and hasn't really been um, um, reduced at all. Um, but the idea was that we were going to, you know, uh, declare war on poverty. There was going to be a federal um, uh, insertion of money at the local level, skipping past the state and local government. Um, and uh, they were going to teach poor people how to fight their own battles. And the center of that uh, process was going to be the Community Action Agency. And uh, that's what, how we got started in December of 1965 had some rocky years. The idea was to engage poor people in the problem-solving process, and that was a little sloppy in those days. It was also a little bit top-down. It, it was, um, and you know, it was a little awkward for some poor folk from the other side of the track sitting next to some guy looking like you and me that uh, you know couldn't possibly have the experience that they've had. Right. It created some resentment and so on. Today, we're back at that that square one, really. I mean, our agencies work is, um, is uh, organized with low-income people's participation, their active involvement, and um, you know we don't do anything for anyone, is my uh, kind of crude way of saying that you know we teach people how to solve their own problems. Um, we're not here to solve them for and them. And they're teaching us how to solve problems as well. I mean, that's, that's the thing. There is no, when you start to shift, you start to understand that there is no us and them. There's, there's only us, right? right? There's only us. And everybody's ignorant. We're just ignorant on different subjects. Educate me. Right. Help me. Right? Yeah. Help and me. be open to being educated, right? I right. mean, you know, a lot of us think we know everything. I'm certainly one of those, but I also am willing to concede that, <laughs> you know, I've got plenty to learn. So, um, and be open to having somebody tell you that you're full of it. Right. right. It's right. you don't you don't get it. And then you you have to sort of stay, take a step back and listen. Right. Because you probably are if somebody's telling you. Yep. And I have to apologize far too often, but <laughs> that's OK. It's part of the that's part of the healing process. So. Um, so how do you fund all of these different programs? You have a very significant budget of over twenty seven million dollars. How does how does how do the finances work of so many different programs and so many disparate programs? Well, and. The thing that's really kind of um, unique for us is that among there are about 1,100 community action agencies in the country, and the vast majority of them are almost entirely publicly funded. They're private nonprofits, but they're funded by many government programs. Uh, I think only 40% of our funding or, or so comes from government sources. We are um, mostly funded by private sources, individuals, corporations, foundations. We have some fee-for-service stuff. The fees aren't charged to the people we serve, but the, uh, like utility companies and banks. Um, so we've been pretty creative and and trying to keep our our funding um, sources as varied and as um, diverse as possible, so that we're not too dependent on any one. And that's of those also sources. philosophical. You, the, the philosophy being that you don't want to become too dependent because it leads to sloppy behavior. It also puts you in a position where you can't just walk away, right? And and so um, now the the complexity of the agency is huge. I mean, we have people crawling around in attics, you know, blowing insulation into the home to you know to weatherize them. We have people that do lending. We have people who work with homeless families. We've got people who um, you know have to manage a, a complex budget. I mean, we've got a real array of of talent in the organization to pull off all the things that we do. You have a you have a very extensive competency map for the organization. Yeah, and and um, you know organizationally we are still pretty um, you know vertical. Um, just because you know somebody's got to be the so-called CEO. I hate that term. I don't um, I don't even like to identify myself as executive director. I think it sounds pompous. Um, I work at the Community Action Committee of the High Valley. That's good enough. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, I mean, I'm basically an anti-authoritarian. And so the notion of me being in a position of authority is pretty uncomfortable. Um, and um, it makes for an interesting, you know, day of work for me and the people around me. 
you're in a particular business, your business is helping people who are incentivized, who are who have the the desire, motivation, the motivation yeah. to help themselves, and you're going to help them. You're going to address some of these imbalances, and you're looking in your for your employee of people who can take that idea and create out of those real solutions. Right, and um, you know we're not unwilling to take on. I mean, we're, we're taking on everything. I mean, we're, we're going after the race issue. That is one of the most um, frustrating um, issues that this country has ever. Uh, tried to deal with it. It's not dealing with it well, and I'm taking that on. We're we're working now with a whole group of a uh, large group of people across all the levels of of um, society to develop a strategic plan for the Lehigh Valley on on how to mitigate the impact of uh, racism on people. You know, how can we kick doors open where they are have been historically closed or locked or bolted shut? Um, you know, so you know, purchasing policies. Uh, that that cut out small business owners, um, uh, a citywide election when you know certain neighborhoods are getting not getting represented because they um, because they're, all the seats are at large. Where if you go to districts, you you know you make sure that people from all the different parts of the city are, are going to be represented. Um, um, insisting that nonprofits boards be diverse uh, because you know if you don't have people that you um, serve on your board, um, you can't really know enough about the problem to, to develop the right solution. So there's, there's all those kinds of things. And that goes to issues of governance, right? If, you, if, you're, if you're defining board membership by income, then basically you're eliminating people you know, as of a certain income level. Um, and, yeah. and even there, there, there are issues of just having time, the disposable time to sit on a board. Yeah, that's a challenge. Uh, our board is set up so that a third of the uh, directors are low income or representative of low income people. A third are elected officials or their appointed representatives. And then whatever is left, um, it's not always a third because it's, it's at least a third for the low income. What's left are the private sector people. So whereas a, um, you know, the Red Cross has got a whole board full of people with resources and, and some influence and um, and the ability to uh, to move the system, um, we only have a third of those kinds of people on our board because we have people that you know are affected by these issues uh, with a voice on the board too. And I think that's at least as important as anybody else. Alan Jennings, thank you so much for explaining to us the work of the Community Action Committee of Lehigh Valley, and thank you so much. Thanks for, for your having insights. me.